I'm Father Roger Landry, and I welcome you to the full day five of our novena to Our Lady under the title of Immaculate Conception. Today we're going to focus on our invoking Mary as Queen of Peace. We remember that her son Jesus came into her womb and into our world as Prince of Peace. During the Last Supper, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give peace to you. Jesus had a particular type of peace, and he came as the peacemaker, the one who definitively signed the peace treaty in his blood between God and the human race. And Jesus wanted us to be peacemakers, to take that peace out into the entire world, saying that the peacemakers are blessed because they will be true children of God. So as sons and daughters of God, we are sent out as peacemakers. Remember what happened when Jesus rose from the dead. He went to the closed doors of the upper room, and three separate times he wished the apostles shalom, that Hebrew expression for peace. He had triumphed over death and over sin precisely to give us that peace. And if we're ever going to be peacemakers in the world, we have to let that peace reign in us. And no one shows us better how to do that as disciples and apostles than Mary. Jesus likewise said that he had come into the world not to bring peace, curiously enough, but the sword, and that on account of him, families would be divided, three against two, two against three, mothers against daughters, mother-in-laws against daughter-in-law, sons against their dads. Why? Because when somebody puts God first, when somebody is living in peace with God and others, some others get a little bit jealous that they're not in first place. Jesus came precisely with his mercy to heal us of that division caused by sin. But we have to grasp how much we need that gift of peace. Mary has been often invoked under her title, Queen of Peace. In 1571, in the Battle of Lepanto, she was invoked precisely in that battle against the Muslim forces who were coming into Europe. A little bit over 110 years later, she was invoked again in the Battle of Vienna, precisely to keep peace in Christian Christendom. During World War I, Pope Benedict XV made this title, Queen of Peace, get inserted in the litany of Loretto so that we could, through her intercession, bring about an end to that great war. What is peace? It's a tranquility of order, first with God. And Mary shows us how to be at peace with God. Second, it's a tranquility of order with others. And Mary shows us how to live with justice, mercy, and love toward others. And peace is finally a tranquility of order within ourselves, body and soul, emotions, reason and will. She shows us that perfect integration. Mary identifies with her son's mission of peace, and she wants us to do it as well. So many images of Our Lady depict her holding Christ in her arms as Christ holds an olive branch, that great sign of peace, because she's constantly offering us her son, begging us to embrace him, because with him and with him alone is our peace. St. John Paul II stressed when he taught us about the prayer of the rosary, how the rosary is a school of peace. It's a prayer in which we enter into Mary's own womb as we contemplate that blessed fruit of her womb within, the Prince of Peace. St. John Paul II said, anyone who assimilates the mystery of Christ learns the secret of peace and makes it his life's project. The rosary is a prayer of peace because of the fruits of charity that it produces. How could one possibly follow in the footsteps of Christ the revealer in the mystery of light, he asks, without resolving to be a witness to the beatitudes in daily life? By keeping the focus of our eyes on Christ, the rosary makes us peacemakers in the world. By its nature as an insistent choral petition in harmony with Christ's invitation to pray ceaselessly, the rosary through Mary's intercession allows us to hope that even today, the difficult battle for peace can be won. Far from offering an escape from the problems of the world, Mary in prayer obliges us to see them with responsible and generous eyes and obtains for us the strength to face them with the certainty of God's help and the firm intention of bearing witness in every situation to love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. For young adults trying to integrate the faith into their civic and professional lives, we're being sent out by Jesus into a divided world, families, neighborhoods, politics, even the church 
experience division. We all need Mary's help to bring people back into communion, into that one family. We need to be at peace with God, with others, and within ourselves. Then we can become true peacemakers, like Christ in the first century, Francis in the 13th, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Mandela, Mother Teresa, and John Paul II in the 20th. Let's ask Mary for that help. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. O Mary, conceived without original sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.